Cafe Day and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Crystal Paco, so glad you could join us. Topping our news tonight, guilty of certain of the accusations. This is the latest from a papal bulletin issued on Friday, March 16, on Guam's suspended Archbishop Anthony Aperon. Aperon, to date, stands five times accused of clergy sexual abuse. While the tribunal has reached their verdict, he still faces civil lawsuits in the District Court of Guam. According to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, this means he'll be removed from office and prohibited from residence in the Archdiocese of Agania. Just hours after the Holy See's announcement, Apron issued a written statement expressing his intent to appeal. Quote, God is my witness, I am innocent, and I look forward to proving my innocence in the appeals process. End quote. He adds, quote, Today my prayers are with the church in Guam, which has been suffering greatly. End quote. Aperon's successor will be Coadjutor Archbishop Michael Burns, who, in previous interviews, stated Aperon's return would be, quote unquote, disaster. Via a press release, Archbishop Burns welcomed the verdict. Quote, it is a monumental marker in our journey toward healing as one church, one people in God. I pray that all people will embrace the call for healing. End quote. Even if Aperon appeals a sentence, local Catholics are urged to push forward with penance and reparation. A news conference will be held on Monday where Archbishop Burns is anticipated to make further comment on what this means for the Archdiocese of Agania. Until then, he extends his prayers and thanks to the victims and their families for having the courage to share their agonizing stories of abuse by Aperon. Roy Quintanitza was the first to publicly accuse Aperon of clergy sexual abuse. Quintanitza tells KUAM, quote, I always believed that the Vatican would find Aperon guilty. How could they not after our written and personal testimony? This verdict was a long time coming. Aperon enjoyed the life of being the Archbishop of Guam for three decades, when he really should have never been bishop in the first place. Lucky for him, we remained silent all that time. I am so glad we stopped being silent. Silent, end quote. Quintanitza was the first of five to accuse Aperon. He was followed by Walter Denton, Roland Sandia, and Doris Conception on behalf of her late son, Joseph Sonny Canata. Mark Aperon in recent months also came forward alleging he was raped by his uncle. Quintanitza tells KUAM the credit goes to Guam's laity. Quote, the Vatican's verdict was made possible because Guam's faithful stood together against an injustice. Although it took me 40 years to come forward, I'm glad I did, and I am glad for everyone that came forward to tell their story, end quote. According to the Holy See Press Bulletin, Aperon remains in limbo because of his pending appeal. Quote, this sentence remains subject to possible appeal. In the absence of an appeal, the sentence becomes final and effective. In the case of an appeal, the imposed penalties are suspended until final resolution. End quote. For more, make sure to join us Monday at 6.30 p.m. for our special report, The Vatican Verdict. You celebrated Pi Day on March 14th by eating pizza and sweet treats. But how will you celebrate World Down Syndrome Day on March 21st? The genetic disorder affects one in every 700 babies in the United States. Here at home, a group of affected families continue to advocate for the support and acceptance for those with Down Syndrome. Here's more on how you can get involved. Meet Felicity. She loves to sing and dance. Her favorite song at the moment is Havana by Camila Cabello. Hey! <laughs> Felicity has Down syndrome. Mom Vicky Ariola and president of the Down Syndrome Association of Guam hopes you'll help celebrate a very special day for Felicity and others like her next week. We just went through Pi Day, right? Because of 3.14. But this is 321. Most children with Down, children and adults with Down syndrome have three of the 21st chromosome. The special day, March 21st, was established in 2006 with the goal of raising awareness and mobilizing support and recognition of the dignity, rights, and well-being of those with Down syndrome across the world. To celebrate here at home, Ariola says they're holding a mass at the St. Jude Church in Sinahanya at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Festivities will continue over the weekend at the Guam Premier Outlets with a photo exhibit. And we're calling it Joy and Inspiration 
because really our kids give everybody, but mostly our families, joy. And they inspire us to be better, to do something to help others. The hope is to get the public familiar with the genetic disorder so they can be more accepting of Felicity yeah. and others like her. While there's no data on how many are affected locally, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the genetic disorder affects approximately one in every 700 babies born in the United States. That's about 6,000 babies every year. If you've never met someone with Down syndrome, you should know. And not to be afraid when they go up to give you a hug, and not to be afraid when they say weird things to you, because they really will forget about it. They don't hold grudges. It's kind of amazing. They still have such innocence, no matter what age. And they tend to be living longer now. Um, so that's what makes them special. The 21st chromosome does a lot of things medically to them. And um, <laughs> she's handing it. Um, they, each child has a, and per, an adult have a, has a different medical issue they have to deal with. That's where the Down Syndrome Association of Guam takes action. It was just amazing to me to see everybody together um, and then to ask questions. What dentist do you go to because my, I, I can't find one? Or what doctor do you go to? Or, or um, does your child have this issue? How are you dealing with this in school? So ha our organization is really there for support but also for awareness. While the face of Down syndrome on the surface looks the same, each child is different. For Felicity, it means... She's in the fifth grade right now, but actually intellectually she's in the first, second grade with math or reading. And so it makes it a little bit difficult, but yet they're almost perennial, perennially young. Her smile is contagious. A few minutes with her and you'll understand what makes her so special. She's got the right attitude. I and mean, really, she stops us in our tracks and she helps us to focus and she gives us the right attitude to live by, right, Felicity? To be happy, right? Yeah. Yes. The exhibit starts on Saturday, March 24th at 6 p.m. at GPO and will be on display until the end of the month. For more information or to get involved with the Down Syndrome Association of Guam, call 472-6114 or visit downsyndromeguam.org. Back in court this week, parties for the 160 clergy sexual abuse lawsuits. Back in January, majority of councils were in agreement on pre-mediation protocol and anticipated mediation to take place in June or even earlier. Only one group of plaintiffs, those represented by attorney Anthony Perez, requested lifting the stay on those cases in the local court. The deal breaker appears to be how mediation will be handled. The church proposing global mediation while Perez's clients have expressed interest in individual settlement. Allowing his cases to move forward, some parties cautioned, could pose issues for those proceeding with out-of-court settlement. An update will be provided at a joint hearing with Chief Judge Francis Teddy Gugatewood and Judge Michael Berdalio on Tuesday in the federal court. That hearing starts at 9.30 a.m. It's a topic many stray away from. Visiting the island, Dr. Neil Nedley hopes to shed some light on how to deal with mental health. Our Carmen Terlahi has the story. Depression is at an all-time high. When we've had losses, abuse, and trauma, which are at an all-time high in our society, and how we can go through the appropriate um, steps for turning disappointments into appointments. And Dr. Neil Nedley gave two presentations, one at the Guam Congress building to encourage new policies that would include mental health education in Guam's health care insurance plans. Also speaking to the Department of Education counselors and staff, encouraging them to watch out for signs of depression and anxiety in their students. An issue he says is timely with the number of school shootings stateside. You know, anyone who takes a gun like that obviously has a severe mental illness um, and uh, one that should have been dealt with a long time before. And so, um, unfortunately, there are some people that fall through the cracks. And, um, and are not getting the help they need uh, mentally. His advice to teachers who want to help? Get close to them enough to be able to really be sure of the symptoms that you're finding. And then encourage that student, or if need be, if it's pretty severe, do what it takes to uh, get them to the health professionals that can um, turn them around. Dr. Nedley also reached out with free nightly seminars. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. 
It's decision time. Students wondering where politicians place education on a list of priorities. At a Simon Sanchez High School Q&A forum, Guam's youth asked tough questions to three of the five candidates for lieutenant governor. It's time to take a look at Decision Watch with Carmen Terlahi. The debate about the issues is on. Many voting for the first time and most can't even vote, but that didn't stop Simon Sanchez High School students from asking questions about their education. Going before the student body, candidates for Lieutenant Governor Alicia Limtiaco, Josh Tenorio, and Fred Bordalio. In light of the current administration's promise to make college tuition free, they respond. If we are able to identify resources so that college can be made without cost, or, or uh, free or less costly for our students, we will absolutely support it. If they found money, and there's money to give free college uh, education and tuition, then that money should be used and prioritized for our Guam Department of Education, especially Simon Sanchez to get this school built. And if you open the floodgates like that without proper planning, it's going to probably get stu take students longer time to get their degree because classes are going to be filled with people that are probably in there for the wrong reason. Linked to education, students pulled them on the issues. Many concerned for the alarming rates of drugs and crime on Guam. Crime fluctuates. But I'll tell you, when I was chief of police, one of the biggest ways you can uh, attack the crime issue is having a lot more police presence. But do you know that there are 24 drug and alcohol counselors on Guam, but only two of them are doing this full time? The business side of that has to change. Enforcement is key. Encouraging our community to please come forward when they see something. Students wrapped up the forum asking that after 10 years of empty promises, protests and delays, will Simon Sanchez High School ever be rebuilt? That there are ways to get this done faster, holding somebody accountable and empowering them to make the decision. Um, and I think it is the superintendent. It is our responsibility to give you what you deserve and to make sure that we are there with you and that you truly can have an enriched learning environment. People being favored to get some of these contracts. And, and it, it's unfair and the ones who suffer is Simon Sanchez. At the end there was a vote. The students here deciding. 51% for Josh Tenorio, 11% for Alicia Limtiaco, and 8% for Fred Bordalio. 12% were still undecided. Meanwhile, absent from the forum, Lieutenant Candidates David Cruz and Tony Ada. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Docomo Pacific unveiled its new headquarters. Many may remember the Timuning Building as the Ben Franklin Department Store built by the Mark V. Pangolin and family. It was famous for having the first escalator here. Nestor Lacanto got to tour the ultra-modern offices, which were patterned after the interiors you might see in high-tech Silicon Valley companies. Docomo President and CEO Jonathan Kriegel was our tour guide, more than happy to show off their new headquarters. Uh, this place um, is so filled with memories uh, for everybody. Um, when we first started to do this project, so many people approached me and said, wow, it's great that you're taking this iconic building and uh, bringing it back to life. This is our flagship retail space. It's meant to be an area. You can see it's very open. You can see that everything is out and accessible. The other thing that we feature here, Nestor, is that we show people who visit us uh, for a repair. And actually, over half of the folks who come in uh, leave with their device fixed uh, before they uh, depart the store. So Kriegel says they even sent a team to Silicon Valley to visit some of the high-tech offices there. One of the things they learned is that a very open space like this where you can see we've got people have got their kids in here after school, people are having lunch, 
Uh, generally, you will also see people, when I walked in here this morning at about 8.30, uh, there were a group of four people uh, sitting there with their laptops open working on a project together. We tried to look around the world and figure out what is best practice sort of for a sort of technology company today and to bring that sort of those ideas here uh, into our business. There are no longer offices with walls that you can't see in. Every room in this building, including my office, it's all glass. The headquarters has so many more features that we don't have time to show you. Everything from a high-tech conference room, training rooms that look like university classrooms, and even a quiet room where employees can go just to take a quick power nap. Kriegel says there just may be something for everyone. So each of the rooms has a different theme, so this one uh, is meant to uh, sort of bring back uh, the early days of gaming in Super Mario Brothers, and uh, look, it just creates a slightly more lively environment, right? Uh For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Stay tuned more when Weekend Edition returns. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming of KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club. If you get nervous about having dental treatment, you're not alone. An estimated 35 million adults experience anxiety or nervousness at the simple thought of visiting the dentist. As your dentist, I strive to make your visit as painless or pain-free as possible. And I frequently tell my patients that in the 21st century, if we can give you medicines to put your tooth to sleep or medicines to take an infection or toothache away, we can surely give you something to help relax you and take all fear away. No one ought to sit in a dental chair thinking of bad childhood memories or fearing injections. If you're a dental coward, but you really do want your teeth fixed, don't wait until the pain is killing you. Come in, tell us your fears, and set up an appointment. We have convinced many that dental treatment doesn't need to be scary anymore. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. You shall never know all the good a simple smile can do. the most excellent of egg hunts at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam on Tuesday, March 27th from 3 to 7 p.m. Pre-register for the right age group in one of the four egg hunts per hour. Call 647-4544 or stop in the restaurant and sign up at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. And during Ram Truck Month, save up to $97.50 on new Ram trucks. Cars Plus has a great selection of 2018 Ram trucks. Plus, shop our remaining 2017 Ram 1500s. Voted Guam's best truck two years in a row. The Ram truck comes with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. And with 1.99 APR financing for qualified buyers, there's no better time to buy than now. It's Ram Truck Month, and only Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. Cars Plus, driven by you. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. It's with every click, like, and comment that you gave your thoughts on the stories happening around us. Joining us this week with Trend Spotting is Asha Robles. Asha? From blaming an alleged abuse on ancient spirits to Guamanians preserving Guam's culture, there was much to talk about this week. We've got it all covered. Here's Trend Spotting.
It started as a social media post that went viral. A Weddingale Elementary School parent alleging her son stood in the hot sun for 40 minutes on Wednesday. Cassie Duenas' understanding of the situation was that students were being punished and denied water and bathroom breaks. Her son and two of his classmates were rushed to the Guam Regional Medical City. The Department of Education launched an investigation and a day later determined school officials did nothing wrong. DOE spokesperson Isa Baza told KUAM that the incident happened during a lunch break and the students became dehydrated while outside for an extra 10 minutes. All three students, she said, were treated by the school nurse and were wearing extra layers of clothing. The children did have the opportunity to drink water and use the restroom during the lunch period and before entering the classroom. DOE assures the community that student safety remains a top priority. But Duenas commented on our Facebook, I find it insane that DOE can investigate themselves and then clear themselves. J. Marie Cruz also spoke out saying, John Fernandez, further action should be required. No ifs, ands, or buts. Somewhere down the line, school personnel failed to make sure the kids were safe. David Anthony Wanako allegedly beat his girlfriend after a dispute about her infidelity. When questioned by the police, however, he reportedly told them Tautamona gave her the bruise. She is crazy. When it's family violence, you guys believe the chicks. Island residents made light of the excuse with a few of these comments. Don Rock said, well, that's original. DRM Babauta also comments, so I'm guessing he was expecting the witch doctor to come. And Roy Evans says, next time, just ask for forgiveness. The couple is currently under arrest. In lighter news, there was a lot to be proud about this week on social media. A contingent from Guam took home various hardware at an international slingstone tournament held recently in Spain. Josiah Paris, Brandy J. Uggen, and Roman de la Cruz all came home with multiple trophies from the event and island residents expressed their congratulations on Instagram. Some of the comments read, Yes, much love to you all Guam people. Biba Chamorro, super proud of you guys, Chelu. Yay, congrats to all. And putting Guam on the map, Biba. On Monday, we also featured Taina, a traditional journey, a 30-minute special that documented the monumental effort to construct a 22-foot Chamorro double haul canoe. The local seafaring group, Ulitao, completed the task, saying this is the first time in 400 years a canoe of this kind has been constructed in Guam. Guamanians alike showed their approval. Some of the comments on Instagram read, So proud of them. Amazing, great job, Biba Ulitao. These are just some of the popular stories on our social media. I'm Asha Robles with Trend Spotting, and don't forget, register your email for KUAM Digital Digest, our weekly newsletter that sends the top stories and biggest conversations each week in your inbox. You can sign up on our homepage, so remember to keep those likes, comments, engagements, and emojis coming, and we'll see you next week. Guam is more than a tiny island in the Pacific. This magical place is where I call home. This island inspires me to learn and explore what's around me. It teaches me that there are no shortcuts in life and that the long way home may just be the scenic route. And that even the dirt roads can lead you to beautiful destinations. celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Matson management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there 
is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. Records I break, or how many rings I win, I know I can always be better. There are two of me. There's a person I. Cars Plus, driven by you. The Good Life, all month long on the stations and networks of KUAM. Check the KUAM News app or KUAM.com for all program listings. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday, Julia Caroline. Also celebrating Pat and Dave Floss, wishing you a very happy 71st and 74th birthday from your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Happy birthday, Eric Elijah Chrysostomo. We love you and miss you. With lots of love, Katie, Nance, Connie, Boobers, and Mikey, Mom and Dad. Happy birthday, Mary Grace and Patrick Uggin. Happiest of birthdays to our favorite dingas, love the family. Happy birthday, Gavin, also known as Curly Barrana. Turning 16, we love you, Mommy, Daddy, and the family. And happy birthday to our very own Sherelle Daniel. Also celebrating Dakota Dean Cruz turning two. And last but not least, happy birthday, Patricia Peterson. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. That's all the time we have. Good night. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Day. I'm Peter Duenas, corporate chef and owner of Mesla Restaurants. Join me in my quest for culinary inspiration and some of the best flavors around. This is my food obsession. of Japan so we're looking forward to a great trip great food come with us and let's check it out <laughs> 